Janine, and this is Major. Major is one of our senior dogs that's with us right now and is available for adoption. He's some kind of a shepherdy mix and just a really sweet boy. He's panting a lot right now though because it's storming outside and he's a little stressed out from the thunder and the lightning. And um, so that brings us to a really good topic right now is um, how dogs and cats can feel about the 4th of July and fireworks, which can be really, really scary to them. Um, they don't understand what the noises are and sometimes they try and get away from those noises, but as we know, you can't really get away from, from the firework noises. Um, the dogs don't really understand that. So shelters, um, it's one of their busiest times of the year is right after 4th of July and actually building up to it because people are doing fireworks in their neighborhoods and stuff. And so dogs that are afraid will jump fences, they'll climb under fences. Um, we've even um, known of a dog to jump through a window trying to get away from the noises. And so it's really frightening for some of them. So some things that you can do to keep your dog safe and just more comfortable. And one of them is if your dog's afraid of any kind of loud noises, um, guaranteed they're gonna be afraid of fireworks. So, so you wanna create a nice environment for them in your house. Maybe close your blinds and your curtains and um, create some, some white noise, whether that be um, a radio or a TV playing and, um, and give them a blanket and a nice place to to bed down and some fresh water. Those are all things um, that you can do to, to help your dog. And uh, something I do at my house is when my dog is stressed out, and, and some dogs will do this, some won't, but um, I give him a Kong with peanut butter in it. And he's so interested in the Kong that he's forgetting about what's going on around him. So that's something that you can do. Um, you wanna make sure that your, your pet's collars have identification tags on them and that their collars are um, not too loose so they don't lose them. And if you've got a microchip, make sure that microchip is up to date with your correct information. And um, you might even have time to get a microchip. If your pet doesn't have one, you might wanna think about getting a chip for them and it's like a tiny piece of rice, it's about the size of it, it goes right here, kind of in their shoulder blades, and it's an identification that will never go away, it's always there, and if they become lost and someone takes them to a vet or a shelter, the first thing we do is scan them to see if they have a chip for identification. Um, but you really need to have an ID tag too, as well. Um, let's see, and I would suggest you make sure you have up-to-date photos so if your pet were to get lost that you've got a photo to take to a shelter um, or make posters if your dog were lost um, but just know that you don't want to leave them outside where um, in the yard especially um, or um, because they can break free of whatever enclosure they're in they can jump when they're afraid, they can do all kinds of super dog tricks to get away from that noise. And like I said, you know, the other side of the fence is not away from it, but they don't understand that. Um, and then, of course, if you do see fireworks or people are doing them in your neighborhood, the debris that falls off from those, those are toxic to dogs. So you want to make sure that your yard doesn't have any debris in it. And um, anyway, and if you're, you know, the best solution is to be home with your pet. And, um, but if you can't, just make sure your environment in your home is nice and safe for them and they feel, you know, so that they feel comfortable and safe. All right, well, I think 